What is going on guys? We are back playing some more Surviving with Immersive Engineering. Now in today's episode we're going to be automating the squeezer, which is going to be very similar to what we did last episode with automating the fermenter. And you guys can see that this is working pretty well. Uh, if we come over here you can see it's been running a little bit, but I did move this a little bit closer to the entrance to free up some room. So we did lose all the ethanol because I didn't think to actually take it out, but it should be fine because you know whenever I'm just AFKing here, uh, both of these will be running. But we're going to be setting the squeezer up right over here. So first things first, we're actually going to set up the squeezer itself. And we're kind of going to work backwards because I want to make sure that I have the whole room set up as uh, compact as possible. And we're going to need a little bit of room for the farm. So I just kind of want to work backwards and verify that we're going to actually have the space that we need. So obviously it's going to be pretty much the same thing as building the fermenter. We're going to do a 3x3 three three of light engineering blocks. Then the second layer is going to have one right in the center, surrounded by the industrial squeezer blocks. And then the top is just going to be another 3x3 three three of light engineering blocks. And this one was a little bit more annoying to make because these blocks are green and they required the uh, cactus green. So I had to go find cacti and that took a really long time. But we want to make sure that we click on this side because you can see that other sides they have different textures so this is the side I clicked on and it's got this nice little I guess these are kind of like just dial dials or something I don't know um, but yeah if we click on this you can see we get it on this side again and these sides don't have it so it's just something that you know you can do it if you want to but it's not really necessary so now we're gonna be working backwards and I'm gonna try and keep it symmetrical so that whenever we need to check on stuff we can walk right through here and we don't have to worry about you know hopping on top of stuff or whatever so we're going to get out a bunch of conveyor belts and we are going to be running them directly to this and I don't think we're actually going to need to drop them down at all or not at least to start things out. So we are just going to be putting it right in the side here and we're actually going to have to make another machine for this side because uh, we're going to be using pumpkins and you could use anything like melons, pumpkins, uh, regular seeds or industrial hemp seeds. But I didn't know how to automate industrial hemp seeds, and I actually was just thinking that pumpkins and melons are really easy to automate. So I'll go out, and whichever one I find first, we will use. And because I didn't feel like going into an abandoned mine shaft or something to try and find melon seeds, I just thought I'd find some pumpkins, which I came across really quickly. So what we're going to be doing is creating an automated pumpkin farm over here. And then we actually get you obviously get the pumpkins from that or if you were doing melons you would get the actual like melon slices and then those need to be converted to seeds so if you guys don't know each pumpkin becomes four pumpkin seeds and every melon slice becomes one um, melon seed so we need to convert these and the best way to do that and i think it actually might be the only way take a look at the book here is and i'll just show you guys you can see i think we went over this last time but the melon seeds get you 80 pumpkin gets you 80 seeds get you 80 and then the hemp gets you 120 but i think we should be okay with 80. but if we come back up here we can look at the tools and simple machines and this is the assembler so it's not super difficult to make relatively cheap takes some steel a little bit of iron and then some conveyor belts but what this does is it allows for you to put power in and insert items and it can hold up to three different crafting recipes and of course ours is relatively simple we're only going to be using it for converting from melons or pumpkins in our case to seeds and then pulling it out so it's really cheap and you can see it says three recipes can be stored 18 slots below for the inventory and you can even put fluids in if you need those for the recipe so it's pretty cool and we're going to be setting that up right over here and i'm trying to think how I want to do this. I guess we can just put it right, we should have enough room if we put it right here. We'll do it right here. So to set this thing up, you're going to do a full bottom of these uh, steel scaffolding blocks. And then above that, we are going to need to take some sheet metal and line two of the sides with that. Now keep in mind, the items are going to be running through this center piece right here. And it, we should be able to pull it out like this, I think. And then we're going to put conveyor belts going in the direction that we want. And the center block is going to be a light engineering block. And then we are going to be putting, we actually got to get on top of here. So let me get some stone out to jump up on. So then we're going to be putting light engineering blocks right across the center. And I'm actually doing a really poor job of constructing this because we then need to take some of these structural arms, which are just made using steel scaffolding. Put those along that side and then we actually need to get back up here and do the same so I, i'm hoping we can put these down effectively 
let's see. Okay, so we can, because I believe they do need to be oriented correctly. So now this should actually work and we can click on that and it should be going through. And so if we come over here, also I got a nice tip, I just noticed it before I started recording, that if you hold shift and walk over these, you can go right over them, whereas if you don't, it'll, it'll be a little bit rough. So you can see that there, actually you can't see, on this side there's an arrow, but we can't really see it, saying that it's going this way, and you can obviously see the conveyor belt is pushing out this side. So we're just going to connect this to the rest of it by putting the conveyor belt right there, and we're going to have to rotate it around and put another one right there, and it'll connect it. So it should pull these out fine. Uh, I assume it will push onto this one okay, even though it's pulling out of a multi-block structure onto this. It doesn't really seem to like latch on like these do down here, but it should be okay. If not, I can just move it over one. And then we're gonna be putting it in right here, and you can see that this is where you can input the fluids right there, and then the power is going to go in on the top. And one thing to keep in mind is that the blue is where it goes in, so if you need to know where it goes in, you can look at blue, and where it comes out is orange. So that's another easy way. It's not as fun, but yeah, it's a pretty simple way to figure out which is the input and which is the output. The input is also the only side with the fluid going in. Uh, so now we have a way to put things in there and to pull them out. So now if we click on it, we can see the UI right here, and you have the power right here and a bunch of different um, fluids that can be put in there too. So if we put a pumpkin in one of these, we can just do it in the first. It obviously automatically treats it like a crafting grid and says pumpkin seeds are what are going to come out. Now, if you wanted to get rid of it, you could just hit the X, but you know, we want to keep it there, of course. And the internal buffer is what is right here. It said 18 different slots. So if you're worried about, you know, putting too much in this, or if you need a bunch of different things in your crafting recipe, unlike us, we only need one thing. So stuff coming in here should automatically get processed. But you know, if you do have uh, things going in here that need multiple different blocks and you're waiting on one or two, you'll have a nice buffer here. So you don't need to worry about that. And it should be relatively easy to run the power to the top. So we can just grab the medium voltage wire and some of the connectors and I'll use some dirt just because you guys are probably going to be like, Oh my gosh, you're wasting stone. So don't worry. Let's get up here. Okay. Sorry. I thought I messed something up over there so we can hook that up to you know what, we got to get back here too. Can hook that up to that. So we're actually going to have to hook this up then to, I don't know which we want to hook up. We can probably just hook from that to that one and we should be fine. So let's just get rid of these here. And now this should be able to input into this whatever seeds we get. So we can test that out. We don't actually need these pumpkins right here. These are just extra. So we can try throwing them in here and just verify that it works, assuming I can get it on there. And you can see pumpkin seeds are coming out and they should get put right into here. And we can just run power to this really quick so that this one starts running. We can verify that all of that is working. And then we can go and make the automated farm portion of it. So power on the top again, run from there to there. And yep, you can see it is going, it is getting plant oil for us. And so I think this actually looks pretty cool if we come in the center here. I think it's going to look really cool once we have the farm going on this side too. Um, but everything should be good here. We shouldn't be burning through too much power. I will verify before we end the episode that we are still uh, actually making a net gain of power. If not, I may need to set a couple other water wheels up or something. But now we actually need to get things going over here. Okay guys, so we are back and we are now going to be setting up the actual melon and pumpkin farm portion of this. I do say melon and pumpkin again because you could do this for either of them, it would work for both, we're going to be doing pumpkin, but if you wanted to do melon, it would work for that too. So I am going to have to improvise a little bit because my initial setup that I had going here doesn't actually work, or it does work, but it was randomly updating and I couldn't explain why the bud switches were updating, but they were, and it was getting really annoying because the pistons would randomly fire and it was just, I, I didn't feel like dealing with it. So we are going to be doing kind of a similar setup to what's going on over here and just kind of spread it out a little bit and that'll make a little bit more sense in a second. So I'm just gonna obviously do a proof of concept of this because I need to go get more slime balls later. So we're gonna be setting this up and it's gonna take one sticky piston per actual setup that you wanna do. So just keep that in mind. So we're pretty much, like I said, gonna be replicating the whole idea of what's going on over here. So we are going to have a sticky piston attached to a redstone block right there. And we're gonna want dirt right here and right here and I am going to eventually fix this water stream right here because we're not going to need it to be this long, at least not right now. 
And now the next block we need is going to be a regular piston, which is going to go right here. Now we're going to want the melon to grow on this. So we are going to till the soil right here. I do have some bone meal and we have the pumpkin seeds. So we're going to put that right there. We are going to bone meal it all the way up. There we go. And now it should grow here. And what we're going to be doing is essentially setting it up so when this block updates, it's going to be just a bud switch. So when this block updates, uh, it's going to trigger these to fire. And then when it goes away, they will fire again and it will be good to go. So we're going to be putting another repeater here, setting it on two, and doing the same thing we did over there where you're going to put a block like this and bring it up and weave it around. Now this should work and we can bring this right over here to these two blocks. So this should work here relatively effectively. When the melon grows over here, it'll fire just like those did behind me. And I can show you guys how that'll work. If we were to put the melon down right there, you can see it fires, pushes it into the water. Now I don't believe this is 100% lossless. <laughs> Unfortunately, I was testing it out and it was losing some behind it. Of course, the first trial works just because, you know, it wants me to look good to you guys, but I'm not going to try and fake it. I do not think this is 100% lossless, but we're going to do our best to try and prevent things from shooting out in random directions. So we're going to cover these up. And yes, you're going to get block updates right now because we are updating blocks in a general vicinity around this. But we do want to cover things up a little bit. So uh, we want to probably put some stone around on this side. Actually, there's no way it's going to shoot out that side. So we'll keep the stone block there for now. Uh, other than that, I do want to run some stone behind these, and that's going to cause them to update. I just kind of want to fill this in a little bit back here. And then we're obviously going to put glass down in front so they don't overshoot the water stream, and we should be good. So the glass is going to go down in front, and I haven't actually decided how I want this to go yet. If I want it to be uh, kind of like this one where it's a little bit higher up, I could kind of just close it off right here, but I feel like that's a little boring. So we could just do this and kind of run this up here to the ceiling like this and just kind of have it so it's held behind here and then I'll drop the ceiling down one once I'm done but we can line a bunch of these up eventually near each other but you just have to keep in mind that you don't want them to be updating each other so uh, this is pretty much just like a little contraption that should work I assume that it can grow with the block above it because it did look like the melon connected over here um, so hopefully that's the case I'm going to just watch it though because obviously I am improvising here so I'm not 100% sure that this is going to work. It's just kind of theoretical but I am going to jump off camera real quick. I'm going to watch this to make sure it's actually going to work and the minute I see that it works we will jump back, finish things up and we will call it a day. Okay guys, so we are back. It just fired. You can see it going in there. So second time it fired this one it was completely on its own. Everything worked fine and it actually didn't get lost anywhere. So it looks like this setup should work perfectly. Um, obviously it's not as compact as we would like it. We're going to want more of these and we're not actually going to be able to squeeze that many in here, but uh, I can always expand this and eventually I'll probably make its own room for this, like a huge big farm, or I might even put them outside. I don't know yet, but like I said, it's a proof of concept and we're going to go over this one last time just so you guys know what's going on, because if you don't know what a bud switch is, uh, it might be a little bit confusing to you guys. You probably do because they're pretty common. But essentially what is happening here is when this block grows, it is a block update, which is triggering the pistons to fire. And when it fires, this block right here is no longer giving redstone to these, bringing it up there, which is then causing it to get retracted. So uh, it's actually nothing really that special. It's just when a block grows here, it's going to fire them out when it's once it breaks it. Um, because this block is no longer sending power to these, it's going to go back and then it's going to wait for another update to come. So it resets itself. And of course, this isn't super fast. This one is going to get much less plant oil than this one is going to get ethanol at this point. But uh, we will find a healthy balance and of course expand upon both of these, like I said. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope you found it informative. I do apologize that I had to kind of improvise on this. and It wasn't you know, 100% sure as to what was going to work. Obviously, it does work now, but I do feel a little bit bad that my initial plan didn't work. Um, but this does go to show you guys that, you know, you can do some on-the-spot fun redstone stuff, I guess. But uh, like I said, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, feel free to give it a like if you found it helpful or anything like that. It does help me out a lot, and I will talk to you guys later.